What's up guys, my name is Nick and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna introduce you to the latest updates of my options trading channel. In addition to the functionality in version 1.01, .01, this Google Sheet document is now able to pull prices for both stock and options directly into the sheet, removing the need to manually update these inputs. Just wanna give a big shout out to Danny L, whose comments on my video of the first release of the Options Trading Journal largely led to this lady updated version. So thanks again, Danny, much appreciated. Those of you that have not watched my earlier video may be wondering why you even need to journal your trades. I mean, most brokerages have perfectly good account and trade history ledgers available already. While that's true, there's so much more to a journal than just an account statement. By manually recording your process as you trade, You'll learn to hold yourself accountable, correct mistakes you've made, and take the emotion and lack of discipline back out of your trading. Before we get into it, if you enjoy the content and specifically the functionality of the brand new 2.01 version of the Options Trading Journal, do me a huge zero cost favor. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I release new videos every week and it helps me out a ton. With that said, let's get into my screen and I'll see you on the other side. Cheers. So once you click on the link in the description below, you'll be brought to a page like this where you'd be prompted to click on make a copy. This will just take a copy of my spreadsheet and actually put it on your own Google Drive. Okay, so once you're able to access the sheet, you'll be presented with the following screen. Uh, before I look at the new updates though, I do wanna make sure everyone watching is on the same page. Uh, if you haven't seen my first video for version 1.01, .01, I'm going to include footage here which will explain how the trade builder works and the various inputs you need to customize yourself uh, to begin using the spreadsheet. Uh, if you've seen that, uh, I've included a timestamp and a video chapter in the description below so you can jump ahead now to new content specifically relating uh, to the latest updates. Okay, uh, future Nick, we'll catch you on the other side. Cheers. Uh, the first thing to note is that I created this on rather a large monitor. You may need to adjust the size of the screen uh, if you're looking at a, at a smaller, uh, smaller display. Uh, if you go up to here to view, uh, you can simply change the zoom functionality. Uh, smaller numbers, obviously, uh, you'll be able to see better part of the screen. Okay, there's just a couple of inputs that you need to actually update. Uh, the account name, you can just change it, obviously, to Roth IRA or whichever broker you're trading with. Uh, it's not relevant to the functionality of the sheet, so less important. You do, however, need to input the initial account net liquidation value. So this is the starting value of account. Plus, you also need to input the current period start. Typically, this will be like the first day of the year, the first day of the quarter, and so on. Uh, this is important because it's basically measuring uh, the rate of return and annualizing it based on the number of days that you've actually traded and then comparing that to the performance over a 365 day period. All the other metrics that you see on the screen are calculated based on the information in the trades that you put in the blotter down here at the bottom of the screen. Now I've got a couple of example trades I'm going to show you so you can see how that works properly but for now let's not worry about that. So just two last things before we move on to actually entering some examples in the blotter. Uh, it's just these buttons, the sort, sort by trade ID number and sort chronologically. These buttons trigger macros that sort your trades. Uh, I'll show you how that functionality is useful in a little bit. Um, you need to enable those macros though. When you click those for the first time, you're presented with a, a warning message. You need to allow the macros to actually run um, within the sheet. This is only on the very first time. Uh, on subsequent occasions, that won't be necessary. Okay, let's get into some examples and let's see some of the functionality at, actually at work on the sheet. Okay. So in order to save a little bit of time in the video, I've entered three trades and one adjustment. And we'll get to see exactly uh, why that's important later. Okay, so trade number one, so 20th of November, and we enter a short iron condor position on UNG. Uh, we, we assign a trade ID number, the trade date, UNG is the ticker of course, uh, plus one denotes long one contract, minus one short. Uh, the expiration date of course you need to input, DTE, the days to expiration, is calculated by the sheet. It just simply takes the day's date and, and takes the difference between that and the expiration date. You need to input the strike of each of the options and whether the option is a call or a put or it's a stop position. You simply select that from the drop down menu. These are the prices that traded, the option premium prices, or the stop price in the case of a stock entry. The latest mark is simply where that, uh, where that particular option closed uh, today or if you actually bought or sold an option back, then that would be 
uh, the closing price and a date close would be associated with that transaction. If we move to the right of the screen, uh, all these uh, variables here are calculated, the days in the trade, the profit and loss and the returns. Uh, in fact, any uh, square that has any sort of colored background is one that you won't need to enter, okay? Uh, the volatility metrics, I just like to note where IV rank, IV percentile, and the absolute levels of implied volatility are at the time of trade entry. Okay, under position type, clearly these four lines simply re represent long call and long put positions, short call, short put positions, but collectively they form a short iron condor. Okay, it's not necessarily obvious looking at just a single line, so I always put this in uh, so it's clear if it's part of a, a larger position. Uh, under the trade notes here, this is an important section, okay? Uh, include notes on your setup and entry year details. What are the deltas on your short options, for example? Why did you choose the expiration that you chose? What profit targets do you have? What's the maximum risk for the trade? How will you get out? Do you have your stops in place? What will your profit taking exits be? All these things you should note prior to entering the trade. Okay, so on the 21st of November, we have our second trade, trade ID number two. It's a long call on American Airlines. It's a 12 strike call. We pay 220 for it and it closes the day up at $3. Again, the same metrics are calculated and I would encourage you again to go through and, uh, and input the, the relevant trade notes for that position. Um, on the 22nd of November, trade ID number three, it's just a purchase of five long SPY uh, stock. The reason that I've included this basically is to show you that with a stock, uh, obviously expiration and option strike are not relevant fields. Uh, so you should leave those blank. Don't put anything in these fields, otherwise it affects the uh, calculation for the profit and loss of a stock position. Uh, notice also in, in our pretend scenario here, our iron condor position, uh, the downside is tested. And as a result of that, the call spread, so that would be the short 11 and a half long 13 call spread uh, goes to just two cents and we buy that back. Okay, so it's the 22nd of November, we enter the closing date here. Come the opening next day then, we're gonna sell another credit spread, another call credit spread on UNG. Obviously, we're gonna roll the position down there, the strikes will need to be low. So what we're looking at here is the short nine and a half, 11 call credit spread, which will now convert this, this iron condor into an iron butterfly. Now importantly, this new credit spread is still part of the same initial iron condor trade. It's an adjustment. We bought back the original, the original short call credit spread and we're selling another lower strike credit spread. Okay, so this adjustment is part of the original trade. So it's labeled with the same trade ID number. If we go back to the sort by trade ID number just here, we can run the script and it reorganizes these. So now you can see that all trade ID number ones are all located together. And this is useful because we can now see more easily what the actual net profit or loss on that, on that trade potentially is. So for example, if we go over to the profit and loss column and drag this down here, you actually see in the bottom here, you can see the net sum of the total of all those six trades. It's minus $15. So of course this, this trade is actually running at a slight loss right now. Similarly, if we go back up here and look at the number of trades, for example, we can see despite the fact that there are eight entries in the journal down here, the spreadsheet recognizes that there are only really three trades. So it considers the iron condor, this loser, as one separate trade, and that's what this $15 loss is right here. It happens that we've only got one loss, it's losing $15, that's not only the maximum, it's also the average. If you then want to return to, the, uh, to a chronological listing, uh, of your trades, simply click the sort chronologically button and again it puts them back into order by trade date. Okay, so now everyone is caught up, let's take a look at what's new in version 2.01. Uh, firstly, note that some of the formatting in the blotter has now changed. Um, I've included the same trades that we used in the first video so it's easy to see what's different. Okay, note the dates are now in a month, month, day, day, year, year format and that the last mark or close price column K is now greyed out. Uh, indicating that it's a field that automatically populates or contains a formula. These format changes relate to syntax that is required to pull option quotes from the MarketWatch website. So if you do run into any errors, it's almost certainly due to the specific customized URL that is pulling the quotes for the option ticker that you require. And this is the first place I'd look. 
If we jump to the import XML data sheet, uh, we can take a look under the hood and see where the magic runs in the background. Uh, just to be clear, look, I'm not an expert. So when I see all this stuff come together after a ton of Googling Excel functions and how to, I'm still absolutely amazed that uh, the final result actually still works. Okay, let's take a look at how the sheet builds each option ticker URL in order to pull the relevant data. I hope by taking the time to actually explain how this all works, that if you do encounter any issues, you'll be equipped to figure it out by yourself. Okay, so as, as complicated as it might appear, all the entries that are being made in the trade journal, the trade journal entry sheet, uh, come in here to essentially go down just to make this single URL, the URLs that are listed in column M for each individual stock based on what its ticker is, uh, what the expiration for the option is, what the strike is, and so forth. So this table here lists the stock symbol. So in the examples, we've got UNG, AAL, SPY, uh, the option type. When it knows the option type and the expiration date, it's able to pull the, uh, the, the specific stock symbol for the expiration date. So each month has one and so does uh, each uh, option type. So whether it's a call or a put. Month, day, year, obviously. Uh, the strike, um, the strikes are important. Um, they must have a decimal point in them. Okay, the way that the Market Watch site works is it, it takes this, what I call decimal counts up here, um, it has this odd marker here in front which tells, uh, tells the URL where the decimal point appears in this six figure number that appears behind. E indicates, for example, that there's one uh, decimal, uh, one, one digit rather, to the left of the decimal point. Uh, so we notice if we look down here, for example, the 11 and a half strike is listed as a D. Uh, type D because there are two uh, decimals to the left of the of the decimal point. Um, as you go down, uh, depending on what what stocks and what tickers you trade, uh, that will change, of course. But this is going to be typically where um, any errors that occur are, are going to be. If anything has entered in the trade journal here, um, you get you have to have a decimal point here. Okay, it's important. The dates have to be in the correct format. The expirations have to be in the in the correct uh, format. The option strikes have to be in the correct format. Um, what I have noticed here, these closed trades, um, I've simply just typed over these, okay? You'll just, uh, you can just overwrite those formulas when a trade is closed, otherwise it'll continue to update, okay? Which is obviously not what you want when a trade is actually closed. Um, I think that just about covers it. I mean, um, yeah, good luck with it. I mean, I'm pretty pleased with the, with the uh, with the, with the updates, the fact that we've now got actually this sort of real-time incoming data, I mean, quotes are delayed 20 minutes and so forth, whether that's Google Finance uh, or Market Watch, uh, but at least it's something that you don't have to actually manually update yourself. Okay, with that said, I'll, I'll love you and leave you, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Take it easy, cheers. If you made it this far, you made it to the end, and your support is very, very much appreciated. You can access the brand new Google Sheet Options Trading Journal via the link in the description below. If there is sufficient demand, I'll be happy to continue to add additional functionality going forward, so be sure to let me know in the comments what other metrics you'd like to see included in future versions. Again, if you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe to the channel down here and watch other option-ready content by clicking somewhere over there. Until the next one, guys, take it easy. Cheers.